there's a practice exercise for this particular uh, assignment, and it includes an embedded spreadsheet. So to get the data from this embedded spreadsheet, you don't need to type it in again. You just double click. It will open and the data will be selected. So if you press the control key and the C key at the same time, it will copy that data. You can then open up an Excel workbook and paste that data in by pressing control V or by selecting the paste option shown here in the upper left. So for this data, we have a situation where we're interested in the defect rates, that's the numbers in the table, as it's impacted by the temperature setting and the pressure setting. So this is a operation that basically is putting a resist material onto a printed circuit board and it presses that material onto the board at different pressures and it can be heated at different levels and we're going to measure the effects of those two variables on the defect rate. So the first column in this table is the temperature. The next columns are pressures. So we'll go ahead and uh, format the cells. Oh, let's make them about 12 wide. That should allow us to see everything. Actually, it didn't. I double click on the cell boundary. And uh, we'll go ahead and drag these down so that we have readings for each of the different temperatures in each row. So we'll see, for example, that at high temperature and high pressure, we had 39 defects, but we repeated that experiment. So we also had same settings, 30, 35, 43, and 25 defects. So at each combination of settings, we have multiple observations, five to be precise. So now let's go to the data tab, the data analysis option. And if you don't see this, you need to turn it on and Excel is an optional add-in. And what we're interested in doing here is a ANOVA, analysis of variance, two factors with replication. So I'll click OK. We'll tell the uh, tool where the data reside. We'll tell it we have five rows per sample. And let's put the output into a tab we'll call ANOVA. We'll leave the alpha level or level of significance at 0.05. So I click OK and Excel does the analysis and it's done a two factor with replication. So what Excel has done, first of all, is give us these summary statistics. So high pressure, high temperature, the average is 34.4 defects, uh, high temperature, medium pressure, 29.6. High temperature, low pressure is 22. And what we want to know is, are these differences meaningful? Are they significant? We also have at high pressure, a high temp 34.4 defects, medium temp 33 defects, and low temp 35.4. And we want to study not only the temperature and pressure effects, but the interactions. So now we run into the ANOVA table. The ANOVA table has a row, they call it sample, but it's really the rows. So in our case, it's temperatures. And it shows us the p-value of 0.6363. What that means is, since that value is greater than 0.05, it means that the different temperatures, independent of the pressures, had no effect on the defect rate. The temperatures, however, have a p-value of 1.34 times 10 to the minus 6. So the E minus 06 means that you move the decimal place 6 to the left, and that's much less than 0.05. So the pressures had a significant impact on the defect rate. The interaction of the temperature and pressure has a p-value that's much greater than 0.05. So again, there's no significant effect from that value. Now, the question is, what are these differences? So if you look at the different pressures, you'll see that the um, <clears throat> average defect rate varies from a high of 34 across all the temperatures to a low of 23. 
that difference is statistically significant. That's the largest difference. As to the difference between 23 and 25, or 25 and 34, you'd need to conduct t-tests to see if those are significant or some other sophisticated method, which we can do with Minitab. So essentially, Excel gives you some of the basic information. It doesn't do all the detailed analysis that you can get with the specialized statistics software package, but it gets you a, a long ways toward the answer.